there book nerds of the internet, welcome to Come Fab with Abs. I'm Abby and today I'm going to be reviewing Rainbow's End by Werner Vinge. September's been all about sci-fi for me and so this is one of my friend's favorite books so I thought I should definitely read it. So it starts off in like the near future in like a world like our own but the technology's more advanced and it starts off with kind of a political conspiracy. There are the great powers of the world like the US and China, there's an Indo-Europe alliance and um, a guy named Braun from the Indo-Europe alliance notices something going a little weird in one of the um, research labs in the United States in San Diego. He believes that they are researching uh, mind control technology and so that obviously freaks him out but it's not really in his territory because he's in the Indo-Euro Alliance and it's happening in the United States. Anyway, so he turns to two people he, he thinks he can trust, Kaiko from Japan and Alfred who's another Indo-European like analyst. They decide that they are going to kind of plot and hijack and figure out a way that they can get in find out what that lab is researching without America knowing. So it's kind of a, like, Ocean's Eleven, Mission Impossible type of thing as these spies are trying to get in and get out without being noticed and to get the information that they need. So they decide to hire this person, Rabbit, who is going to kind of pull it all off and get them where they need to be and have connections in San Diego that they need. And so the, the Rabbit, they don't know if they can trust him exactly, but they think he'll do the best job, they don't think he's smart enough to know what's exactly happening and that they can control it. Then it goes into you get to know some of the people in San Diego that you, you know, assume are going to be part of this somehow and so the main character really isn't Braun or Kaiko or any of those. The real main character is, is Robert. He's an old, old poet who has Alzheimer's but they have this medical technique that is able to combat the Alzheimer's and make him um, physically much, much younger. This doesn't work on everyone and it doesn't work as well as on some people as others but on Robert it works very well and so you kind of see his perspective as it, he lives kind of hazily and then it kind of clears as this medical treatment happens, um, but he doesn't quite have the magic he had for poetry that he did before, and he's also, he just has a different personality than before, and he, it makes him kind of sad to have lost his poetry, but also, like, you know, he now has his cognition back, which is, like, really, really good. So you follow him as he's going back to school and learning all this new technology because it's a completely different world, and you find that he lives with his son Bob and Bob's wife Alice and their daughter Miri, and they don't quite trust Robert because back before his Alzheimer's he had quite a temper. They don't trust him because they're worried he's going to be aggressive and violent or just really, really harsh, especially they're protective of their daughter Miri. And so th that's kind of the base of the relationships that are happening. And what's really interesting is Alice and Bob are both in the like military analyst thing and so you kind of like get the feeling that Robert's the main character because Robert's gonna try to like talk to Robert especially to get to Alice and Bob. And it's just really interesting as it all culminates in this grand colorful ending with like tons of motivations, what they want and how they want to either help people or be selfish. Basically, this sci-fi is about communication. It's completely about communication and how people communicate in this futuristic world. They have the contacts so that they can like do research on the spot and message each other and they can just like communicate and like be in the technological world with any little movement that they control their, you know, their contacts and they're never really all in one place. It's all about communication between people because the kids are completely immersed in this technology and completely understand how to use it all. And the adults know somewhat but they're not as good at it as the kids of course. And then the old people, especially the ones like Robert who have had this procedure done so they're younger, so they need to pick up on it to be able to continue you living especially if they want to go back in the workforce but it's like really really difficult and then the communication between Robert and his son Bob is just kind of broken down and the relationship between Robert and his granddaughter and and the kids and his because uh, it goes back to high school and his classes it's just really interesting to see what kids are able to like bring out with grandparents and older people there's like nothing quite like that relationship because the adult children of old people and of grandparents like love them but are sad that they aren't who they used to be and that they aren't as smart or as quick as they used to be but the kids don't know any better and they just love them and want to help 
right? And so there's those communication levels and then there's the communication um, that the technology allows. There's the private messaging versus talking, you know, because you don't want some people to know what you're saying and you don't want some people to know you even exist. And then there's the whole idea of identity theft and in this world where it's technology is so ingrained and like you can like physically be somewhere else as a holographic imagination of yourself and some people are better at it than others but like the fact that somebody could like steal your identity and appear as you somewhere else is definitely in here and then the idea of literature and written words and how maybe that's not as important when and everything can be on the internet but is it worth getting rid of even if you can just get it from your contact immediately definitely a little bit of a Fahrenheit 451 type of feeling with the idea of being totally immersed you know, in, in, in whatever technology you have and, and the fact that physical books don't matter anymore was, it was all just like really interesting. Sorry, it was just a whole lot of blah, but really it was just about communication. It was about like the future of, of technology that we have now and how that can like affect us and affect the way we interact with other people and with, with knowledge and with literature and all of those things. It's all talked about here while also being in a kind of an exciting heist type of situation as they, you know, try to figure out if this lab is really trying to do mind controlling technology. And then there's also the idea of AI, artificial intelligence and and what that means. And it kind of like there was a character that reminded me a bit of Jane from um, if you've seen, read Speaker for the Dead or Xenocide, there's a similar character in this book that I really, really loved. If you want to check out Rainbow's End because you like sci-fi and you want to read something that's not quite so spacey or quite so, like, otherworldly, it's very much like Earth in the future, where our technology is taking us and what it means for humanity and communication, read Rainbow's End by Werner Vinge because it's super good. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.